Long ago, Clara Barton drove her wagon onto a battlefield to care for the wounded and people in need. Supplies and services had to get to areas ravaged by war and later to places devastated by natural disaster. Emergency response vehicles are the modern day equivalent of those historic horse-drawn wagons. Today, in times of disaster, the IRV is a crucial part of American Red Cross disaster relief. IRV teams in the field, like all disaster relief workers, keep the Red Cross heritage of caring and concern alive. I feel in mass care on the IRV, you're one-on-one -on -one with the people. And that's where I like to be, right there in ground zero with the people. You're, you're the one that gets right out where the action's at, and that's what I like. I don't want to sit back at a desk and wonder what's going on out there. I want to be out here. I like this. And the satisfaction of helping people, I think, in need is a lot of it. You can really get a good feeling that you're helping people. People ask, uh, why do I do this and don't get paid? My response is that I'm blessed to be able to go out to help somebody. Hi, and welcome to the Red Cross course, Herbs. Ready, set, roll. You're joining a great team, the men and women who work on the IRV. As a disaster relief worker, you'll sometimes be the first and maybe the only Red Cross person our clients see when they need us most. This course is your first step to becoming an IRV team member. Once you pass the driving test and are approved by your chapter, you'll be ready to represent the American Red Cross and help people in need. Some things are learned best through on-the-job training, and aspects of working on an IRV definitely benefit from experience. In this program, we invite you to watch and listen to those who have worked on IRVs during disaster relief operations. Let's start with the most basic question of all. What is an IRV? IRV is the American Red Cross acronym for Emergency Response Vehicle. When an IRV rolls to a disaster operation, um, there are several different functions that we can perform from it. Anything from mass care feeding to disaster mental health services, disaster health services and family registration. Mental health expert here, so use it. When we combine those services, uh, it's what we would call an integrated service delivery. Thank you. I can give you this right here. We can also carry bulk supply on them, cleanup kits. We can do family service on them to where we can actually meet with the clients if it's inclement weather. Uh, we can bring them inside the IRV and do the casework on them. Each IRV has at least two workers at all times. They work as a team, sharing the driving and serving the food. We switch back and forth. I'm the IRV driver right now, but if she'd like to drive, I'll step out and let her drive, and, and I'll work the window. If we're feeding hot meals, and there's just the two of us on here, I'll let her work the window, which is taking care of the people that, as they come up, and I'll get back and fill up the clamshells full of food. So we're a team that way. You have to work as a team to get the, everything done. And then we'll switch roles, yes. uh, you know, during the day. IRV team members put in long hours and depend on each other to deliver services to clients in need. IRV workers share one principal commitment, to provide information, food, or other needed supplies to the people affected by disaster. Here you go, ma'am. IRV teams share a common set of values, which apply to all aspects of their disaster relief work. These are, think safety first, handle food safely, anticipate customer needs, provide and collect accurate information, and use resources wisely. Longtime IRV drivers know that the key to being a great IRV team member is taking personal responsibility for the IRV and its operation. The IRV will be in service longer and will be safe for you and other team members if you adopt this attitude. But whose IRV is it anyway? Nationals? The chapters? The relief operations? 
National owns the majority of herbs, and they are positioned at chapters across the country, um, which we call custodial chapters. It's those chapters' responsibility to maintain them, as well as have trained personnel ready to roll to a disaster site within 24 hours. And that herb team could be on site for as much as three weeks. We know what an herb is, who's responsible for it, and who owns it. In the next segment, we'll learn about and explore aspects of good customer service and how the herb functions in the field. I'm very empathetic. It could so easily be me that is experiencing this kind of disaster. I really like the idea that I can do this now for these people and someday they may be doing it for my son or daughter or for my neighbor. Personally, I found it to be one of the most satisfactory things I've ever done. Welcome back. Practicing good customer service is an important part of the job for an ERG team member. One way to appreciate the importance of good customer service is to imagine yourself in the client's shoes. Imagine it's lunchtime. You've spent the morning shoveling mud out of your home. You can't lock your doors. There's no electricity and no water. You're afraid to be out of eyesight of your house. In this situation, you might be looking out and listening for the Red Cross, too. Number one is being there on time. When you're mobile feeding or even the snack runs, they, they look for you at certain times. And to have the things that they need, plenty of water and things of that sort. All right, thank you. Have a <laughs> In an herb, you might drive to an area and park and people come to you. This is called fixed feeding. Or you might do mobile feeding, driving from street to street and stopping and feeding people along the way. Feeding routes are generally predetermined. Whether you're doing fixed feeding or mobile feeding, the skills and routines are the same. Y'all come on, she's gonna serve some hot meal. When driving in herb, you gotta remember it's gonna be long hours. It starts at five in the morning. You get on the road and go get your meals loaded onto the truck. And you might be an hour from wherever the staging area is. Yeah, how's this radio sound to you? It sounds good and clear also. We got to do 150 meals, but I got to find out who are the other trucks that are going with it. You pack your food, pack your truck. I'm going to grab another bag of ice off of here, right? Sure. There's a lot of tediousness. You have to make sure the loads are secure. You have to make sure you have the proper stuff, cookies and snacks, because we got a lot of kids. So we, what we want to do is want to make sure the kids are happy while the parents are cleaning up their houses and their yards and everything. It's really hard loading up when you're first going out on a job because you really don't know what you're going to face. Hazards of being an herb driver. 